Hey, what's going on? My name is Jack and welcome back to Lab Movies. Today we are going to be finishing off our Ghostbusters videos. Of course, I've done all the three reviews for all the Ghostbuster films, and now this is the final, my definitive ranking of the films. You guys have heard my opinions within my reviews. If you guys have checked out the reviews, I'm very, very grateful for that. I'm covering loads of old films here and new films as well. I'm just not able to go out and see any at the moment, so I thought I'd cover all these old films that I've been meaning to cover in the pipe up for, of course, these newer films that are coming out very, very soon. So let's begin. So the number three is one of them sort of films that isn't there because of the gender. It's just there because I prefer the original two over the third film. And that is, of course, the rebooted 2016 Ghostbusters. This film, like I said in my review, I hadn't seen before. I'd never really given it any sort of look or shade or anything. I didn't particularly like the idea of watching it, given the fact that I didn't know there would be any good. I was very much surprised about this film. The film really surprised me. I was very much excited to see what was going to happen next after the, the movie ended. Because it seemed like they were preparing to do a sequel that will never happen. And I don't know where the sequel would have gone. But it seemed like they were looking at going a sequel route. They had the firehouse board at the end. They had everything really that the original Ghostbusters had all geared up and ready to go by the end of this film. And I think the reason why I didn't watch it was because of the bad marketing. The movie, to me, when I saw the trailers, I wasn't that interested to begin with anyway, because it wasn't the original cast. And the thing that made me less interested was the fact that uh, they decided to show us that the Marshmallow Man was back. They sort of tried to bring the sort of nostalgia feel. This is basically the original film, just for women. It's the exact same thing, and that's the way I saw it anyway. I didn't really see that much difference in it until I actually watched the film, and I was very surprised. The Ghostbusters logo was originally uh, found within the subway, where one of its members is also found as well. I think the story for this film is very much interesting concept of what the world was like without any Ghostbusters, and it's sort of a new, fresh take. But when you watch the originals, and they're your favourites, and I re-watched the originals before watching the 2016 version, I realised that Ghostbusters really does come from the heart of no, not really not knowing. It's the supernatural. And when, when, when the supernatural happens, and no one's there, who are you going to call? Except for Ghostbusters. So... Ghostbusters 2016 is quite an interesting movie in my opinion. It's not the best of the bunch. It's It could have been a lot worse. Um, I think the thing where they really hit the, hit, uh, missed the mark here was the fact that they could have got the three main stars who are returning for Afterlife to return in this film and pass the torch down because they could have all easily been related to a Ghostbuster back in the... Um, you know, back when the Ghostbusters were originally a thing, they could have literally just inherited the business, like I think they're trying to do the pass on the torch thing. Now, in Afterlife, I think they missed the opportunity within the 2016 film, because to me, I thought, if they did the passing of the torch in this film, this film would have been insane. Like, if they'd have had Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, um, Ernie, I think his name's Ernie Winston, I can't remember the original... Name one of the Ghostbusters, and of course, Harry Ramis would have been a part of the film. But um, I think the film, if they did the passing of the torch to the, to their grandkids or the generation below them, or the, or the next generation, such and such. Uh, yeah, uh, Ernie Hudson, who played Winston, I'm, I get I get really confused because I get too very muddled up within them character names and their real life names. But if they did Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, and Ernie Hudson coming in for the final battle within the trailer. The film would have been a big success, and they would have done the passing of the torch. And that way you can still reboot Ghostbusters, but keep some originality in there. I think that was the thing that Sony have now learned from this, is that we needed to give people that, uh, that Ghostbusters uh, feel uh, to it. And that's what they're doing with Afterlife. I think Afterlife will end the Ghostbusters series for the original cast but reboot it for the new and i mean i've been doing a lot of hellbent videos i've uh, done one hellbent video already here on the channel um and that video to me i i want to make another one eventually at some point i just need to find more information about it i know that will smith was going to be cast in the role 
I think there's like another 10 minutes worth of news that I found on YouTube that I could put into a video. But the thing is, I've done my Hellbent video. I would like to do a sequel to that video, uh, but if I don't, it doesn't happen. But this film could have been a really good movie if they'd have gone with the three Ghostbusters turning up at the end. And then we'll be revealed as their aunt, their, their uncles, or, or their fathers, or their grandfathers, or something like that. It'd be, it'd be a nice passing the torch moment. And it only has to actually need to happen within the final frames of the film. Um, of course, Dan Aykroyd reckoned there would have been a sequel if the budget was, you know, if they weren't spending stupid amounts of money on stupid things they didn't need to do. Which might, might be proven, but... At the end of the day, it happened, it's happened now, we can move on from that, because we have Ghostbusters Afterlife coming out soon. But of course, in number two, it has to be the original Ghostbusters movie, the thing that kickstarted it. This film is like very, very slightly less of number one, like it is a fraction away from it. The reason this film isn't, is not number two, is because it built the premise of New York, and it does this sort of amazing story, and it shows us the Ghostbusters... For the first time and it's the origin story of how they all became friends and how they all became sort of these ghostbusters but the thing this film does that i find very intriguing as a viewer i find it very fun to talk about quite a bit is the fact that the first time you see the x01 the first time you see in the firehouse the first time you see pretty much everything within the ghostbusters movies you sort of feel it's unique. It's great. The only issue I have with this film, there's only one, is that this film, it, it, it took a while to get to the ghost busting, but the thing with this film, and the, the, you know, this isn't really a person, this isn't really an issue. It, it's, 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 it's an original story. But the film sort of does this thing where the Ghostbusters are hated a lot throughout it. And it's just a theme within the Ghostbuster films where they're just hated. And I think after the first couple of sightings of ghosts, they shouldn't have been as hated as they were. And in the end, of course, they save Manhattan. And the film sort of ends there. They save Manhattan and the Ghostbusters are heroes. But there's always that bit of shadow of a doubt. Like, if there were so many certain things, like, you didn't need to do Exhibit A or Exhibit B. You could have just done Exhibit A and just ran with it. Like, they were hated for half of the film until we realised that these guys are actually doing a job that we can't do. We can't protect our country. So, do I think that this film is great? I, I love this film. This film's like the best film of the series. And the only reason why it's not at number one, I will say this is the best film of the series, in my opinion. The reason it's not number one is because Ghostbusters 2 does something that the original that, that makes it stand out. And that is it doesn't copy the original. It gives us a brand new story. And I really have to, you know, appraise the writers, praise the story creators on this. Is when you see, well, sometimes with sequels, you see that they are literally the same copy and paste of the first film. And they get some kicks out of it and they make some money. And this film did, didn't do as well as I think they were hoping it would have in 89. But that was because Batman 89 released that summer and Batman 89 beat Ghostbusters and box office and everything. And I think the thing with this film as well, and I think the thing that this film sort of lacks is the fact that Ghostbusters 1 was so original that when Ghostbusters 2 came out, there was so much hype around it as well. I think the thing for me why this is my favourite, Ghostbusters 2 is my favourite film, is, is, no, the reason why Ghostbusters 2 is number one on my list but Ghostbusters, the original movie's number, like, my favourite film, is because Ghostbusters 2 does something original. It has to be praised. It has to be a number one, because it just didn't do a carbon copy of the first film. They gave us a brand new story. Ghostbusters have been out of action for five years. The Ghostbusters, actually, within this film, aren't Ghostbusters anymore. And they only become Ghostbusters once again and start breaking the law and that when their friend Dana's in trouble. And they're not, they're not doing it for money. They're not doing it to get the fame or the glory again. They're doing it because their friend's in trouble and they're the only ones who can. And the movie goes back to that sort of core proceedings and stuff, which is fresh in this in this film. It gets a bit repetitive within the first film. This film's very fresh. And the reason why I say it's fresh is because they're not Ghostbusters anymore. They're, they're actually criminals at this point. 
going into sewers. And they're, they're basically, the course, trying to prove that the Ghostbusters created these ghosts to have a career. And the thing about this that's also very fresh is the fact that it retells on the first film. It goes, oh, well, this happened and this happened and this happened. But it retells everything about the first film once again. Uh, the film does something that I think is incredible with sequels that the, not 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 all sequels get to do, and that is it retells a story that is beautifully constructed, be beautifully done. And I think the thing with this film is that the second one I think would have been an automatic flip if it didn't have the originality. I think the the thing about the Ghostbusters twenty sixteen Ghostbusters two is two had an originality trailer, it had an original story. Ghostbusters 2 was a copycat in the sense that they were just trying to rebuild and regain what they had within the original franchise. Ghostbusters 2 was just trying to sort of create a story premise, but Ghostbusters 2016 was just a copycat of the first film in my eyes towards the trailer marketing. Marketing for the first uh, Ghostbusters 2016 was shocking. This film's marketing was pretty good, I think, back, back then. I, of course, didn't see it, but I watched trailers of this, and I'm thinking, this film, it shows... What has happened has happened. And it also does this interesting thing where people just don't believe in ghosts anymore. They believe the ghosts are now gone. Ghosts will never come back because of the Ghostbusters. But by getting rid of the Ghostbusters, the ghosts can go, well, we want to come back now. And it's one of them films that's sort of difficult to sort of comprehend that Ghostbusters, the original, is my favourite because of the story and the way that they do it. But Ghostbusters 2 has to be my favourite in the, in the rankings and the best film of the series. It's my personal favourite, but the best film in the series has to be Ghostbusters 2 for its originality. And I think I'm going to be a crosshairs with this. Like Ghostbusters 1 and 2 are very equal on my list. Ghostbusters 1, I had to put in second because I just preferred Ghostbusters 2 for its originality. Uh, which is something you don't see in most films. Um, but the, the sequel is definitely better than the previous film. I'm not going to say that it's not, because it is. But I like the original film for what it is. But I also like the sequel because it is what it is. It's it's a completely different thing. And Ghostbusters Hellbent, of course, I have a video coming out on that. If it's not already out, that film is a completely different film. Completely different concept to Ghostbusters 1 and 2. So I think Ghostbusters Hellbent, if it was ever made, probably would have been my favourite film as one of the series. I like films that stick to the same cast, stick to the originality, and they just build on a universe. That's why I like the Dino Trilogy. Because it just builds upon a universe. Dino Rises isn't as good. But you get what I'm saying. Like as long as the movie builds on it and it doesn't copy it, it'll always be up. It'll always be higher on my list. Um, so I think what I'm trying to say is, if you go for a copycat remake like Ghostbusters 2016, try to do it with the trailers. It's gonna fail. Ghostbusters 2 succeeded in my eyes way better than Ghostbusters 1 because it wasn't the copycat project. It was a completely different story. But with that being said, I shall see you all in the next one. Goodbye for now.